Hey guys, it's Robin with Big Doodle Dreams and today we're going to talk about tail docking and this little sweet girl that I've got, this is Miss Olive. Miss Olive is an English Springer Spaniel. She was not born here, she was born at another with another breeder and she has a docked tail which is common to the breed and and it is something that is done at a really young age so I figured it would be a good idea to talk about it, where it came from, the history of tail docking, why we still do this, and you know what, what our options are. Because personally, I don't dock anybody's tails. So all of my dogs have natural tails. I used to dock, and um, I just, I don't know. I don't have a good feeling about it anymore. It's, it's been a lot of years since, since I had any puppies that had a dock tail. Um, but I figured we should at least talk about it. So it's it's been going on for a lot of years, many, many, many hundreds of years, actually. In Roman times, they did it because they thought that it was a preventative for rabies. So they used to intentionally clip the top of the tail, thinking that this was going to prevent rabies. So rabies has been around forever. And, and obviously it was a problem back then, but um, they, they did, they clipped the tails in Roman times thinking that it would be a preventative for rabies and and obviously that's <laughs> that's not accurate <laughs> so as time went on they began to dock tails for other reasons things like hunting dogs because when they're running through the the tall grass and the and the bushes and and all of the underbrush and everything else they would have you know the likelihood that maybe the top of the tail would get caught would get cut they'd have an injury so they were they would dock the the tails of the hunting breeds, the gun dogs and the your your water retrievers, certain breeds, and it was to avoid injury. Then there's the, another purpose behind it, but your guard dogs, and and it's interesting because obviously this doesn't include your shepherd dogs, um, but your guard dogs like your Doberman, your Rottweiler, um, Schnauzers, certain certain breeds, they dock the tails and they dock them short because for obvious reasons, if there's a big tail swishing, and this is a guard dog that is biting, if somebody grabs that tail, you can gain control of the dog. And that, that's you know counterproductive for what you're trying to accomplish um, because you do want a guard dog to be able to be guarding and protective and not, not wind up being caught by its tail. So for, for certain reasons, um, and then also in hunting, and they used to think that by having a shorter tail, that the dog was stronger or faster, <laughs> had more endurance because of the lack of the tail. I, all of it seems very silly. But what I do want to tell you is that um, docking is typically done between uh, birth and five days old. So the puppies are just a matter of ounces. It's not like they're three or four pounds and big and healthy and moving around. We're talking little itty bitty, you know, smaller than fitting into a soda can. When they dock them so they're very vulnerable these these puppies are they were just born they're very small they're very weak and to go and remove a tail is I mean it's it's major surgery to a puppy and um, what I found is that when when all when all the puppies in the litter had a docked tail so they had these little nubs well the end of that nub remains essentially kind of exposed and not it, it gets gunky, it has to heal. So it has to scab over and heal. Well, you've got all these little puppies that are blind. They, they don't begin to have eyes open until day 10 to day 14. So you have blind puppies that are want, you know, scooting around on their bellies and essentially sucking everywhere, trying to find, trying to find the milk. And, and instead they would find their own nubs. They'd find you know, their sibling's nub and suck on the nub, which would make that scab and that sore spot still continue to be open and sore and have a harder time with healing, with the healing process. Um, so I just, it, you know, it makes the puppies weaker. They're not as strong in, in that vital time because they were just born. There's no, you know, they're not protected. They were just born. They're barely able to maintain temperature. I've, you know, I do a heat lamp for the first five days. But puppies, to have that tail removed, it's major surgery. It's a little itty bitty body. They're, they're far more vulnerable and susceptible. It's, 
it's so counterproductive. And, and if you do the research in it, the, um, the American Veterinarian Medical Association, uh, the AVMA, they, they have put out statements about it and they've been against it since 1976. So this is nothing new. They've, you know, they've known that this, this is a, a problem because cosmetically to make a dog look prettier, more beautiful, just because it has a shortened tail, doesn't make any sense. Um, there's very few injuries to tails. When I, I did my research and looked it up, I thought, well, I wonder how much, you know, how often is an injury? How often does this happen? It's not as often as what we might think. Um, I was honestly kind of surprised by it. So, but I did want to show this one because she does have the dock tail. But I do have a puppy because I purchased, I purchased a couple of Springers from different um, breeders because I don't know until I get them and until I health test them um, as to whether or not they'll even, you know, they'll even be able to have puppies. So I typically want to raise more than one at a time. It's a lot easier raising two Springers together because they do keep themselves company. This is not the case for most um, breeds. This specifically for the Springer. Um, I can tell you, I, I think raising one Australian Shepherd by itself is plenty. I wouldn't want to put two. So every breed is different. But I do have two right now. And this little girl has the dock tail. And my other little girl doesn't. I was really excited because it's the first time I've had a Springer that actually has a full tail. So I did want to show you the difference so that you can see the Springer without the tail. And I do have other Springers on my videos. If you go through, you can find Fiona, you can find Penny, and they all have dock tails. So this, this will be the first time that I've had, had one that actually has a tail. So I'm gonna go put Sweet Little Olive up and I will go get Miss Dolly. And then you can, you can see Miss, Miss Dolly and her beautiful tail. All right, so this is Miss Dolly. And Miss Dolly has a tail. And she does like to wag, but she's, she says, you're holding me. But there is her beautiful tail. And her tail will get fur on it, and it will be very pretty. Because it will kind of look like a, a swishy feather. That's what it will look like. But this is my sweet Dolly. Yep, and I'm waiting on health testing. I did, I did send away all of the health testing. I'm very anxious to to see where we fell, if, we, if we're good or not, because that's always a major concern when you invest in a puppy. Um, you know, because the last thing I want to do is invest in a puppy and go through all the process of raising and then have a, a puppy that doesn't turn out to be perfect with their health testing, that's not good. So, but I do, if I can get her to wag, I would like to show you, well, and I don't know if my camera is, Within, within reason, huh? Oh, sweetie pie. Mwah. I love this girl. She's so sweet. So, but you can see her tail. She's like, nope, I'm gonna lay down. So you get to see my sweet dolly. My sweet, sweet dolly. It's okay. It's okay. It's like they're just babies right now. Very sweet, very gentle, very loving. Uh, they're not the high energy, high active level of dog is what an Australian Shepherd is. These guys are far more chill, so you can see them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and your beautiful tail. I love the tails, yes. So I don't dock tails, not gonna ever do it again, promise you. Um, and the other thing that I don't alter is their dew claws. So and she came to me from another breeder, but I don't alter dew claws either. Um, what they've said, as far as the research about dew claws, is that when a dog is in full motion, that extra claw that's up here, so you've got your regular four digits that are here, and there's one on the inside. This one on the inside. Let's see if you can see it from here. This is the dew claw versus the four that you all have, you know, that you see on a regular dog, but this is the dew claw. That dew claw, when they're in full force running, it, it will actually stabilize the joint because they will, they will hit the ground with that dew claw and it will stabilize the joint. Otherwise, if that's missing, it might roll 
their, their ankle could roll and it can cause um, injury over time. They're more likely to have arthritis if the dew claws are removed. So, yeah, we don't alter puppies. Nope, nope, nope. Never again. So, sweet Dolly. Sweet Dolly. With her sweet little tail. And I will see you guys again. Please subscribe to my channel. Visit my website, Big Doodle Dreams. And I will see you soon.